Shalom Chabrim. It is always a pleasure to get to come and speak with you guys. And uh, um, <clears throat> I'm actually in the, uh, we're in the middle of recording several short uh, videos. And um, this happens to be one of those. Don't know exactly how short it's going to be, but not supposed to be very long. Uh, we are working on a new platform uh, that will be coming out in the next few days. This is part of our Israeli trip platform that we're working on. Uh, we have a real precious brother that is very talented in that, Brother Chad, uh, that's working diligently in the background, getting everything ready so that you'll be able to see live feeds, things of that nature. Uh, seeing as God knows, I don't have the talent for that. Uh, <clears throat> he's blessed us with someone that does. Um, last night, I was reading in the book of John because part of the things I want to do when we're in Israel is to take you through uh, the things that Jesus has said, the things that he did, and, and just share with you, as the Lord reveals in my own heart, things that uh, I would look at from a different perspective, um, mainly because there's just little things that, that God seems to reveal to my heart, and i like to share that with you. Uh, I would like sometimes to take the study and just start with Jap John chapter 1, verse 1, and, and go through or either, either Matthew, Mark, or Luke, or whatever the case may be, but unfortunately, that's just not the way the Lord reveals it to me. Uh, maybe later we could compile that together uh, if the Lord does tarry. But uh, as we see the things happening in the world right now, it doesn't look very much like much tarrying is going to be happening. Israel is at the very brink of war, and we are going into a, an area that is extremely volatile. Uh, but that's all right. But we know him who holds all things in his hands and we and we do not fear these things what god may uh have in store we just are thankful that we can be a part of that it reminds me recently my wife saw in a dream she was very fearful all kinds of crazy things were happening all around her people were dying and an angel of the lord came to her in the dream and he just took and he wrapped his wings around her like that and he told her he said do not fear no one can see you. It was incredible. I think I shared that with you guys before. <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's take a look at Lazarus, the story of Lazarus. And um, I think what I'm going to share with you in this story here may cause you to think a little differently about the story of Lazarus. By the way, the Lazarus name in Hebrew is El Ezra, which means God helps or God help or God helped. I mean, different ways it's translated, but it's literally God help, or God helps. He is the, he is God, God is the helper. And uh, when we see the story, this is Mary's brother, and he dies. She's, he's, at the time he's sick, she sends word to uh, Yeshua that Lazarus, the, the, the brother that he loves, he's sick, and for him to please come quickly to pray for him. And, we, and this is in John chapter 11, by the way, where, and, and I'm going to skip and just read some little highlights of this for you. But in verse 4, it says here, When Jesus heard, heard that, talking about Lazarus being sick, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now we know that the raising of Lazarus from the dead was certainly a glory to him. But there's some little key elements in here that prophetically looks to Israel and to Israel's future. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus, excuse me, and her sister and Lazarus, excuse me. And when he had heard, therefore, that, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Now, this is kind of ironic because when we, we find that Yeshua gets to Lazarus, after waiting the two days, then he journeys over there. But when he gets there, Lazarus has been dead four days. So my question is, and I, and I really don't know from, the, from just looking at the, the writing here, is when did Lazarus actually die? Was it the trip? When did he pass away when, when they were coming down? No doubt he died somewhere along the way. Was it part of the trip with, with Yeshua going back? Not really sure. But what I find interesting, though, is the fact that he, when Yeshua gets to the cave, when he gets to Mary and Martha there, 
and he, and, he, and he gets ready to pray for Lazarus. Lazarus is now dead four days. And he also, the other thing that he states that I thought was interesting is that he waited. He waited two more days. Now, it's been 2,000 years since Yeshua has been here on the scene. He's been tarrying, coming. The graves, many of the saints lay in the graves today. If you look at the four days and you think of the 4,000 years, do you realize that that would take us back to when God called Abraham? He called Abraham just over 4,000 years ago. So I cannot begin to, I mean, it just has an, such an incredible insight here to look at Israel prophetically from the time of our father Abraham until the return of, of, of Yeshua HaMashiach in modern days would be 4,000 years. Somewhere. It doesn't have to be exactly that because we see that it is, he'd been dead four days already. So what part of that day was it in? Eh, who knows? But interesting to say the least. Let me read a little bit more to you though because there's a few other little Little nuggets, you might call them in here, that I really like. Uh, verse 7, then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. And his disciples saying him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again. And, which is kind of interesting in itself. You know, it almost makes you think of his return coming back in modern days. Um, they, they, they killed him 2,000 years ago, or they wanted to. As he says, also in the word here that no man could take his life. He laid it down freely. Well, they can't do it anymore at all. Uh, but anyway, he says, that, should we, are you going to go again? <clears throat> Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. And many times I've read this and never really understood. Why was he saying this? This, he's showing you that he is that light of the world. And as long as we walk in him, we, he's the day, we walk in him, we don't stumble. But then he makes another uh, uh, parallel here. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. Notice the light is in him. So Jesus is not talking about the sunshine, the shemesh, but he's talking about where God says to, in the beginning, and God and he said, let there be light. And that light is not in him. If that light is not in man, if, that, if you did not receive the Holy Ghost inside of you, you stumble. He's telling you what the Jews are going to do because the light is not in them. They're walking in the night. You know, and I'll tell you what, there's a precious brother, and he tried to call me today. And brother, I apologize, I wasn't able to take your call yet. Um, but, but I do want to talk with you, a, a real precious brother. He had asked the question, and maybe this will answer the question, because it may be a, a week before I can get back with you. I'll be in Israel by that time, but I will call you back, my brother. But uh, he had seen where I'd said on videos before that, uh, and I want to make sure I clarify this correctly, uh, because some people say, you know, Brother Steve, you believe that the Jews are, you know, that God will save a Jew without accepting Yeshua as their Savior. And that's, that's absolutely right. But what people don't understand is that there is, just to give you an example here, in uh, John chapter 9, verse 41, uh, actually verse 40, and some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. Now we know clearly God talked about blinding Israel in order for the Gentiles to have sight. Now it's God as the judge as far as who is willfully blind and who is blind of their own accord. Um, and in other words, God knows which ones did the things with the intent and those that just could not see in order to fulfill scripture. And this is when the scripture says, let his blood, they cried out, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. And God took the blood of Yeshua and applied it as a token, as a sacrifice for the sins that they were committing. 
Why? Because many of them were blind to the point they didn't realize what they did. We see that because Yeshua himself even says that. Now, it may not have been talking about the, the, the Pharisees that were condemning him, but when he was on that cross and he says, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. He says here, plainly, if you were blind, you would have no sin. So you have to understand, Israel had to be blinded in order to commit the crime they did, but it was also a, a, a sacrificial duty to offer up Mashiach when he came as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. So in this case here, what is it? The blood of Jesus Christ is being applied even now. And... And the thing is, is, is because of what he did, because the sacrifice that he made, like the story of Joseph's brothers, they sold him out. Only Benjamin was not guilty. But God hold the other brothers responsible, including Benjamin, and he wasn't there. And yet, if it had not been for the blood that was shed and poured on his, on his coat, and God accepted that blood, a blood they meant for evil, then God would have required that blood and he would have required their blood instead for the atonement. I'm not yelling at my brother. I'm just, just trying to drive that in so you understand. See, so therefore the Jews down through the last 2,000 years, that blood God has applied upon them. So, and that doesn't mean that every Jew that says, oh, you know, I'm a Jew and uh, I can just live any old way I want, live, you know, smoke, drink, gamble, curse, and commit adultery and everything else, you know, and I, I, I've got it made, I'm a Jew. No, no, no. I don't believe that at all. But I do believe that down through the last 2,000 years, those Jewish people that have loved God, that have tried their best to, to live God, live for God the best way they know, He's obligated to have mercy upon them. And to me, the blood of Yeshua is what's atoning for them. Now, in this case, that's what the parable about Lazarus is so beautiful. Because he's telling you here, chapter 11, verse 9, And there are there not twelve hours in the day? And if a man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Now, he's given that analogy, but in verse 10, the light is not, no longer being seen. It's missing from within inside the person. So the light that came into the world, you had to take that light within you. And that was the life of Almighty God, His life, from the Eitz Chaim, the tree of life in the Garden of Eden, which He was that tree of life. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. He was showing you, and it's so true, so many times it's been said of Israel that after this happened, after the, the death of Yeshua, you know, they talk about the Dark Ages. Israel's been going through the Dark Ages for 2,000 years, through the persecution and everything else against our people. So anyway, I, I wanted to share that with you. So let's, a little further down, we'll finish here. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may wake him out of his sleep. And that's what, that's what the Jews are doing right now. Since, since, since Adam, excuse me, not Adam, but Abraham, since Abraham, 4,000 years the Jews have been sleeping. Isn't that, that's amazing. And now we know that when Yeshua died on the cross and many rose again, but you've got to remember, he's given this parable here even before that resurrection happens. So he's doing it combined together. Now, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they all came up out of the graves and went with Yeshua when that, when that happened uh, in the resurrection when, when, right after he resurrected himself. They rose as well, all right? But a combined together still has to be fulfilled. The rest of the brethren that have not come up yet, the house of Israel who's been dispersed since for 700 and some odd years, God promises to raise him up according to Ezekiel. See, so that's what's so beautiful about the story. How be it about Jesus spoke of his death, but they that uh, he had spoken of taking of the rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent you may believe, nevertheless, let us go into him. Now it goes on down, and um, we skip down, we read about how that, uh, that, uh, 
they come out to meeting uh, Martha and Mary, uh, and he's going to comfort them. And 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 Martha, here, let me read verse 21 here. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Mm, isn't that beautiful? But I know now that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Now then she's going to sit there and say, I know he'll rise up in the last day. See, but watch what he says to her. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now, brother, sister, I don't know if you guys get that one right there, but let me read that to you one more time. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. You ever remember reading over there in, um, in Ezekiel's prophecy when they say our hope is all lost? You know, if the house of Israel could have seen Yeshua when he came, I believe they would have believed on him. That's a, that's a deep one. That's deep. But anyway, um, so he says, Then saith uh, unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. That's how simple it is to receive the Holy Ghost. When you, when, when you believe upon him and know that he is that tree of life, and you, you invite him to come in, God can do an incredible work in a person's life. That's what we need. It's what, what is called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm, praise be to God. All right now, Lord, if thou, let's, let's go a little bit further down. And then, then Mary comes and she says the same, Lord, if thou hadst been here, this verse 32, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? You know what's so interesting? You know that's a beautiful parallel when Yeshua comes this day? Doesn't the scripture say they will mourn according to Zechariah when they see him? Where did you get these wounds? And yet he's going to bring forth that resurrection when he does. Remember what I said, Lazarus' name means God help. Our God helps. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Where have you laid him? Then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. And, uh, and of, course, of course, we read Jesus wept in verse 35. And, and could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a, a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, if thou wouldest believe that thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I know that Thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And, and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, Loose him and let him go. Why, why is he bound? Face, everything. His eyes, his ears, everything was bound. Because Israel has been in blindness. They've not been able to see nor hear the word of God. Satan has tried to bind them up down through the years. But when Yeshua comes this time, he's going to loose them. He will command, loose them. And Satan will lose his hold upon the people of God. And they will hear. And they will see. And what a revival that will be. God bless you.